Hey, it's Matt. I have a couple of update, updates for you this month. Uh, first, I had to build a section up to my upper level, and to do that, I need to go through a concrete block wall, and that presents some problems with assembling the spline roadbed. I use screws through the homosote, and you can't get to the screws if it's in the middle of a block wall. So I have a fixture here, a plywood fixture, that forms the correct radius, and I can clamp the splines to that fixture, and then shoot some screws through so it'll hold its shape. You can kind of see the process here, um, putting a screw in, advancing a clamp, putting another screw in, advancing a clamp, and so forth. The last section I'm putting on, most of this was already assembled before the video started, but this last section I'm putting on is just the uh, ballast profile. And next I'll put it through the hole in the wall that goes to the other side, the north side of the basement, and ties in with the main line north of Circleville. Now what, uh, what you don't see here is that fits together very nicely right here, but what you're not seeing is that uh, part of this I had to cut those to length, use the oscillating saw with a metal cutting blade, and that works really well in HOMA, so you can do it precisely and it doesn't leave much dust behind. Uh, so the process is to put it together, clamp it in place, make sure it feels good, looks good, level, all that sort of thing, then start shooting some screws in. So you'll see me often marking where these screws are, the idea being that uh, later when I put on the ballast shoulders and whatnot, I don't end up shooting a screw on top of another one. Uh, so that's what I'm doing here, and then I'll go ahead and progress down the line. Now what I've liked a lot about the homosote construction, I should say the spline, homosote spline and screw construction process, is that it's easy to make repairs. So there's a couple of things here I'm not happy with, um, I'm feeling some high spots or something. So can undo the uh, screws, pull them out. As you see me doing here, I can make my adjustments as needed, reclamp it, put the new screws in to hold it in a new position as I as I see fit, and then move on. And that's it's, so it's very forgiving in that way. Um, something to comment on here is that some of these ballast shoulders on the backdrop side, uh, typically I'll attach those with one inch screws, but since the backdrop is in the way, and I end up having to shoot long screws in from the outside, so that's probably two, two and a half inch screws through the three spline levels and the uh, and the ballast shoulder. And then this is a more typical way, just shooting the one inch screws in. Uh, later, went to shape the ditches, this is in Circleville itself. Uh, the construction method I use for the double track is to put three splines together at two inch high and then put a one half inch spline between them and then put three more splines on and that gives me a little bit of a lower in this section in the center where I can make my ditch so prior to this video being shot and went around that lower section added in the great stuff foam and now I'm using some vinyl flexible spackle to fill in the voids that great stuff always seems to have so the process is to uh, layer this on and just kind of do long strokes at a time so it stays smooth. And my left hand there, you see I have a corner spackling tool that I use for uh, putting corners or smoothing out caulk and whatnot in corners. So the process is to drag that along at kind of a low angle so it uh, makes a nice ditch shape. And Christy's pitching in too. And, uh, and once this it is complete. I'll let it dry overnight and move on to the next step, which is uh, doing some final finishing of the surface. So the first step in that is to run over the entire length with a, a short surf form. And this is to mainly to get the bits of spackle and whatnot that I've gotten in places that shouldn't have been off, so on the road bed itself and so forth, and to do some I get the really high spots off the, the ditch in the center. After sweeping, I go on with the sanding sponge. Uh, this I thought would work out really well because it's got uh, nice angled shapes on it. Yeah, but it's really not quite aggressive enough. So uh, it's a nice finish type of material, but it uh, wasn't great for getting the high spots off. So next I switch to a, uh, a utility knife. And the utility knife works real well. and doing some final shaping because there were some spots that weren't, weren't quite shaped correctly. Get that final shaping done and to get off the little ridges that are sometimes left behind after spackling. So I complete that part 
and then uh, move on to painting. So of course this is uh, after it's been swept up as well. And the idea here was to use a paint. I'm not using it to seal. I know some guys, some guys who use homo like to paint the homo to seal it. But I use it to basically get my cinder color. The idea that I can put some track down without without ballast and it looks sim somewhat finished. But also to provide some camouflage so if the ballast does get flaked off, then uh, then you have some color that looks natural beneath it. So Christy's helping out by getting the uh, uh, drop cloths on. She's very good at keeping me cleaner than I would be on my own. And I got some paint from Home Depot. I had it mixed up to a color that, that looked a lot like uh, some cinder that I found near my house. And then I'm doing the inside, and then she's doing the outside, and this goes pretty quick. End up putting two coats on, because I went over this later and uh, re-sanded and whatnot, and exposed some, some of the spackle. So I put another coat on. If I do this again, I'll probably just put one coat on. Um, it leaves a kind of a, a rough surface that I think will do a lot better job of holding the ballast in place. And yes, it really did go that fast. So I hope you enjoyed the update and uh, I'll get another one out to you soon.